An open standard to bring 3D to web, desktop, and mobile applications. So here you go. Thank you very much. Thanks. So uh, I did a show of hands, and I see that not a whole lot of people know about I3S. So I guess let's get started. What is I3S? Uh, Index 3D scene layers is a standard. It's an OGC standard that allows you to stream large amounts of uh, uh, 3D geospatial data, uh, both to the web, desktop, and mobile systems. Uh, I3S uh, was designed uh, from the get-go to be cloud, web, and mobile friendly. Uh, it's based on JSON, REST, and binary protocols, uh, so that optimization as well as uh, readability are not sacrificed. Uh, yes, you know, coordinate systems are very key for geospatial systems, uh, and uh, I3S supports uh, both Cartesian, uh, Cartesian and Polar coordinate systems, as well as vertical coordinate systems. And um, you might have seen some data set that have been offset by, you know, 30 meters, uh, especially in Europe or so, because some applications don't consider uh, vertical coordinate system. So I3S also from the get-go considered both horizontal as well as vertical coordinate system and specified it in the uh, standard what it supports uh, for, uh, for ease of use. Uh, the standard is expandable um, to accommodate different data types and access patterns. And um, I3S was released by ESRI in 2015. Uh, we released it as an open GitHub community uh, uh, specification. It was released under Apache 2.0 license. And then uh, OGC in the fall of 2017, we started the process earlier than that, but uh, started adapting it as an OGC standard and it became actually an OGC community standard in the fall of uh, 2017. Um, it's a mature standard. Um, and as I said, uh, the more evolving, uh, you know, more fastly changing version is available at the GitHub community version, uh, whereas the more mature uh, community standard uh, maintained by OGC is available at the OGC side. Uh, currently, the OGC version is at 1.0, whereas the I3S uh, 1.0 corresponding to the 1.6 version of the I3S in the GitHub community. Uh, and the GitHub community has already evolved. So OGC has this nice pr uh, process uh, for community standards where uh, only a mature and uh, widely adapted uh, uh, standard would be adapted. So if we add a new layer type or if uh, somebody proposes in the community for adding a new, new layer type, it has to be implemented in the community and there has to be evidence of implementation before it could become a standard. And we'll see a few examples of those. So. We already talked about this um, tour at OGC, uh, the link up up there, uh, I3S uh, version, you can grab it. And then the evolving and more evolving, more up-to-date version is that the GitHub uh, community version uh, maintained primarily by Esri. So just to lay it out here, anyone can use it, I3S for free. Uh, it's Apache 2.0. You can read and write uh, I3S content as well as display it. And you can also propose change and new uh, patterns of usage uh, can also be proposed uh, uh, to the standard. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the technology. Sorry, the graphics might not be the best, but it's better on the laptop. Um, I3S really, the central topic or central uh, premise of I3S is this organization of geospatial data using a hierarchical bounding volume hierarchy, uh, node-based uh, spatial structure. So. What that means is, as a consuming client application, there will be this metadata information, the nodes that you'd be able to access first. And then, based on the, say, level of detail that you are rendering, uh, you'd be able to select content and prioritize content and be able to uh, display it on your screen uh, very efficiently without really needing to traverse the whole uh, content. So, the whole idea is centered around this bounding volume hierarchy, multi-level of detail, organization of data, input data that it could be fed to a cooker or a data, uh, 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 data organizer. Um, now, I3S defines, okay, this one didn't proceed, but on my slide it has, so let me try again. All right, so again, apologies for the uh, graphics uh, uh, on the display, but the concept here is that I3S is agnostic to the data partitioning scheme used. Uh, you can use KD trees, sparsoc trees, quad trees, whatever you might want, as long as it's reflected in the uh, node index structure, then the consuming client does not need to know the complexity of how that data was built. 
And this is key and central to you know this uh, massive uh, mesh data streaming uh, techniques that the client just obeys and traverses this you know node index document and. At a certain level that you want to render different level of detail, you just check that node index document to say, is it good enough to render uh, for the screen resolution that I have right now? If yes, you just display or request content for that level of detail. If not, you just send down the three. So very much uh, easily repeatable pattern uh, and uh, usage uh, uh, format that makes it very scalable in that you can have you know hundreds of thousands of buildings, millions of buildings really, and uh, very large meshes that cover uh, you know the earth uh, typically. Ithrace has uh, in the get go from the the original version of Ithrace introduced uh, uh, minimum bounding spheres for bounding volume criteria, uh, but then uh, the second iteration or when we updated we added. Uh, uh, OBBs, oriented bounding box for better uh, shape. So the graphics that you see here is, uh, you know, with OBBs you have more tighter control of what you're requesting and culling, whereas those uh, MBS you can have a little bit more data than you need to render. Uh, you know, both are approximate, uh, appro approximation of, uh, 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 of content and what you need to draw. So uh, the, again, the format allows you to define multiple bounding volume criteria that allows you to, um, to either sacrifice uh, performance or ease of use. So, uh, you know, OB, uh, minimum bounded spheres are very optimal for, you know, it's easy to use just as long as it's bound within that sphere, you can use. Whereas when you go on this slide, on the slide to the right, uh, you are actually more conservative in what you're fetching. In other words, uh, you don't fetch buildings that are not required uh, as you do when you're using uh, MPSs, uh, for example, in OBB case where you're more tighter in your bounding volume. Um, so the current version of, uh, if I may go back, uh, the current version of i3s supports uh, MBS and OBB and uh, in the future other uh, more compact forms like ConvexL maybe could be supported. But again, uh, in trying to balance you know, ease of use and optimality uh, at the same time. So what are the different layer types that are defined in i3s? Uh, 3D object, this is um, 3D object uh, layer type that we call is this is typical 3D objects that you'd see in cityscapes, you know, buildings, cars, uh, uh, whatever features that you can associate with. Uh, such type of uh, data uh, could be imported from all different uh, uh, sources, OBJs, uh, uh, 3DS, um, Collada, you know, whatever format it is could be imported into the system and they belong to a profile called mesh pyramids. Uh, I3S kind of introduces this uh, profile concept where layers that have similar behavior are grouped into one profile and um, we will add or we will propose to the community adding more profiles in the future uh, when it is significantly different than current uh, uh, access patterns and usage. Um, so uh, the other one, very similar to the 3D objects, is integrated mesh, which is uh, skin of the earth data type, uh, data type that covers the whole entire uh, uh, area is typically collected from uh, photogrammetric or uh, drone technology and uh, structure from motion is uh, usually employed to just generate the meshes from uh, imagery. Um, the others, uh, point and point cloud are also well used and understood in GIS. So these are the four layer types that are currently uh, supported in I3S. Now, again, as I said, uh, uh, I3S is, um, you know, evolving, mature standard, but it is also evolving. So OGC communities are working on adapting the I3S point cloud scene layer uh, as part of OGC 1.1. These three are uh, part of 1.0, and 1.1 will bring in the uh, point cloud scene layer, which is a process going on right now as we speak. But then um, there is more types. Uh, building scene layer that has been introduced last year uh, in the GitHub community version uh, is also a specific type of uh, 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 pattern. Um, actually, this should be building, even though it looks uh, very uh, similar to mesh pyramids, it's a, a different uh, profile type because it can have points, point cloud, and mesh pyramids also in it, a building layer. And we'll show a little bit example of that. Um, an example of this uh, 3D object layer, uh, this is city of San Francisco, 100,000 buildings, I'll also show you a live demo, uh, with textured buildings uh, that have really high resolution uh, data, data is, uh, content, uh, data is provided by a content provider. Uh, PLW in this case. So very high resolution content, but scalable. The key points that I want you to take away is, you know, bounding volume hierarchy and multi-LOD, multi multi-level of detail 
is really central to the uh, to the uh, specification. Uh, you might not notice, but you know, as you zoom in and zoom out, you know, multiple levels of details are displayed and are swapping out, um, and that kind of gives you this illusion that you are looking at this continuous mesh or continuous data, but uh, also very efficient to load on mobile systems, the browser, and also desktop. Uh, the second layer, its cousin, yeah, three integrated mesh layer. Uh, is a data that covers, we call it skin of the earth type of data because it covers everything, you know, the trees, the church, uh, this is the data for Marseille uh, from context capture, you know, covers a lot of everything is cap captured really uh, in that scene. And very similar kind of, you know, uh, traversal pattern, mesh pyramid as it belongs to the mesh pyramid uh, 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 profile and is very uh, related to 3D objects. Now, the only difference between this one and 3D objects really is that the mesh segmentation information is not available here. In other words, you don't know what range of triangles occupy this basilica as opposed to in 3D objects, each object is a feature. So you do know, you know the mesh range uh, as associated with that so that you can associate it with attribute or tabular information. Uh, point cloud, LiDAR sources, uh, Bose, uh, um, Aerial and as well as uh, terrestrial are supported. Uh, massive amounts of point cloud data uh, can be captured and built into this uh, system um, and uh, could be displayed also again web, desktop, and browser. And I'll uh, show you the uh, actual live demo. Here's one concept that I want you to take a look. This is a building scene layer, and uh, it will look back, and you'll, if you didn't catch it, you'll, you'll see uh, what is going on here. So imagine again taking the city of San Francisco and on top of one building, put another city of San Francisco on it. So the idea here is that really when with the buildings in there, you're dealing with scale. Because uh, you see, so it zooms out, this is San Francisco, and we picked one of the buildings, and then I'm zooming in, the same data kind of, you know, shrunk into scale is put here. And the idea here we want to communicate is that with buildings in there, really the kind of resolution and content that you have is you know, the doorknobs and the uh, telephones and uh, things that are really uh, high, uh, high uh, detail are captured with a building scene layer. But people want to visualize it in the context of a building, not just the objects that themselves in an empty scene, but you know, with the context, with the terrain and background and whatnot. So that's the building scene layer that is now available in the uh, i3s GitHub uh, version, but not yet in OGC, soon to be hopefully. Uh, that would allow you to do this kind of uh, visualization. All right, moving on. Um, now we're doing for time. Um, let's talk a little bit about the data structure, how data is organized, uh, the physical organization of uh, data within a node. I'm sorry, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll read it. Well, you'll get the slides anyway. So in, in I3S, uh, this node index document is really central to the uh, data organization. Uh, this uh, document actually uh, contains the uh, LOD selection criteria. Basically, the metric that you'd use to switch to a different node is defined in here. This is uh, one uh, metric that we have, maximum screen threshold. Basically, it's the size in pixels, and you'd say, if it is bigger than this pixel, you know, this projected size, this value that I get in here, uh, depending on what you're using. If it is MPS, you take the uh, diameter of that MPS. If it is bigger than what I have on the screen, then uh, I'll go ahead and uh, render it. But if not, I'll go ahead and des descend down and get its uh, children. And the children are also listed in here. Uh, eight children are, you know, uh, uh, referenced by the parent node. So that's how the traversal uh, continues. Um, now, only when you are ready, as I said earlier, that you'd fetch the data for geometry data, or only when it is appropriate to display it at that level of detail. Uh, same for texture data or any uh, attribute or tabular information uh, found. The attribute data, geometry data, as well as texture are all binary, obviously for performance and optimization reason. Uh, and whereas, you know, uh, for example, feature data that describes the uh, feature segmentation information is also present in this document. Now, for optimality, we also include the mesh segmentation information with the geometry data, so that when you get a geometry, not only will you be able to you know, display the vertices of the triangles, uh, but also you'd know the range of triangles that occupy a certain feature uh, annotated by its ID. Um, let me go on to the next slide. So here is a quick layout of what uh, the geometry layout of a mesh pyramid uh, 3D objects looks like. 
Uh, remember what I talked about being able to segment the mesh. So if you can think of that, this uh, really represent features, feature one to N, uh, and one, uh, one feature really would occupy or would have uh, this sort of uh, format. Uh, vertices are obviously this, uh, uh, you know, laid out X, Y, Z. Uh, if, if it has normals, normals are present, as well as texture coordinates if it is a texture data. Um, regions are like sub-texture data information that you used to have. Uh, texture atlas, for example, defining uh, many uh, features. Now, in the geometry, one single geometry actually could occupy many, many, many features. So it could have like, you know, depending on the capacity. So this is like really left to the data cooker that builds that content to organize the data into batchable or, you know, easily streamable content so that the texture is not too big. Um, so I've been told I have five minutes. So. So the data is organized like this. Again, you'll get uh, more information in that, um, uh, that uh, segmentation information, as I said, is, is occupied in the latter parts of the binary geometry data. Uh, again, this is uh, an improvement. Uh, the 1.7 version of I3S has introduced a page index node, which is compacting of the nodes into this page node that would allow you to request thousands of nodes at once as opposed to one to one, just to reduce the uh, you know, uh, back and forth uh, server client uh, traffic. Um, texture also, uh, now, another thing that we introduced here in the geometry buffer is uh, additional Draco compression. Uh, Draco compression is more optimal to uh, reduce the binary geometry data. So that one is introduced in the version 1.7 as well. Um, point clouds in there, I'll go briefly about this, uh, is again, uh, going through the uh, uh, adoption process in OGC uh, and all the information would be available here. We introduced uh, a new compression, again, Apache 2.0 on the public, both the compression implementation, both in C++ and JavaScript. Uh, decompressors are provided, uh, helps to really minimize the size of the data. Um, so I'm gonna fly through some of the slides. Um, I3S layer can be presented into a package. This is the package representation of I3S called SLPK, where content could be organized for exchange. It's one file uh, that you can actually uh, share, as well as it could be a service um, uh, that was displayed in earlier slides. Here are some examples of data, a Netherlands HN1, HN3, LiDAR survey for point cloud, 630 billion points, really, captured as a single i uh, SLPK, uh, that's probably the largest one that we've cooked. Uh, you know, texture buildings, the ones that I showed you for San Francisco. So let me switch back to the demos and uh, four minutes. <laughs> uh, let's see oh, what yeah, we have. Something like that. Uh, the links are here uh, for the GitHub link uh, for the uh, source as well as Lepsi source and uh, uh, documentation. Uh, but um, let me just quickly show you what I was talking about. So here's the city of San Francisco, the same data that, very performant actually, and you'd notice that it's swapping through different levels of uh, details uh, connected just to the uh, Wi-Fi network here. and. We, not only would you be able to do that, but also be able to actually select and identify an object. This is for 3D objects that have the mesh segmentation information. Um, integrated mesh layer type, that is, uh, covers you know vast area. This is from a company called NearMap for New York City. Again, covers large amounts of area. No mesh segmentation information in here, but uh, I know you are e you are able to capture large amounts of uh, uh, area uh, with uh, with ease and represented in this uh, format. And then. Uh, this is the Netherlands HN3 uh, that I was talking about. A very large collection of uh, point cloud data covering the entire country, and again captured as an I3S layer. Uh, lastly, uh, this is the new building layer that I was talking about that we have introduced, not yet an OGC standard, but is going through the process. And here, typically what people do is they want to reveal you know, different layers. So for example, I'm interested on level three only, and then I'm also interested only in the stairs. For example, I'm a structural engineer and I would like to see the stairs. So in that case, you can actually go ahead and say exclude. Um, you, can, you, can, you, can play, you, can, you can plant this planes, basically planes that allows you to sort of like slice through it. And you see, when I slice through it, the whole, uh, the whole uh, building disappeared and I can play through that. But what I can also do is I can exclude certain features. For example, I can say the stairs are excluded. So when I'm zooming through here, you'll see the, state, the stairs uh, stay there. Um, so this is the building scene layer that we have. And maybe while we do questions, you put this. I 
wanted to show you the same content really on the phone that because iTrace actually works both on desktop, mobile, and uh, just using the phone right here. Let me open up. And same data, same resources that I was showing you here can also be consumed in, in the native application or browser. You can switch back to the browser and be able to go. Yeah, yeah. it's just on time. Just, uh, just on time. All right, so this is iTrace, so I hope you got a bit more. Okay, thank you very much, Tarmat, for this great presentation. So are there any questions regarding I3S? So here we have one. Uh, Hi, a quick question. Um, so you mentioned it's an open standard. Uh, are there any other implementations of I3S other than the one you have, uh, A, on the server side, and B, uh, on the representation side? Where is Melo? Oh, Melo's right there, actually. Melo actually also has an implementation of I3S that they can consume, correct? Uh, and on the server side, really, there is no requirement for the server. You can put the iTrace standard behind an HTTP server and yeah. stream it. And uh, yeah, the Esri ArcGIS server is, uh, you know, first class citizen that you can use it, but there is no yeah. uh, And repeat the question, right? <laughs> or, yeah. or he used uh, the mic, he, right? He, yeah, the mic. So uh, to, re to answer the question, uh, there is no requirement having uh, an Esri product, for example, to be the back end. You can put the i3s content behind an HTTP server. And in, in fact, actually, in the specification, you will see how. Uh, let me go and show you real here. Oh, I'm not connected. Oops, sorry. Yeah, in the specification, you will see how. In the specification, you will see how uh, you can uh, lay out. Um, Oh yeah, uh, how you can lay out the, uh, if you go to here, format, and uh, the index format, it shows you at the bottom, actually just uh, use the uh, table right here, uh, i3s, uh, just go to the bottom actually, find it easier. Yeah, um, just s search for like a store, actually, uh, data stores, and then you'll be able to see how you can uh, lay it out onto your own HTTP server to be able to consume it. Um, SLPK uh, persistency here, sorry. So, um, so yeah, you're not required uh, to have any, you know, commercial, for example, software behind it. You can lay it out as you want. Oh, so the other question is to create it. Uh, what are the sources? So. Now, I didn't get to this last data, but here are uh, the slide. Here are about a dozen or so data providers that are creating it. Uh, Bentley, Nearmap, uh, IGSOP, all this, uh, you know, data providers are actually providing I3S. Uh, there's no, uh, you know, the, the, the key with I3S is really having that multi-LOD data representation. And typically, a lot of people would have just a single LOD, for example, from 3DS or OBJ. In that case, for example, in the case of Esri, we provide a tool that builds this multi-LOD data from a single LOD. But if you already have that, which is the case with most of these data providers, they already built multi-LOD representation for mesh data, uh, they can just pour it down to that. So uh, right now, yeah, commercial products that would allow you to create this uh, 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 I3S content if you don't have uh, the multi-LOD representation. But if you already have it, you can just pour it down into the specification like these guys are doing, most of these guys. They are not using any Esri software to do that. Is there any... Uh, oh, oh, the mic. Okay. Okay. Is there any uh, future ties between this and uh, like your new joint venture with Autodesk? Uh, so uh, the question is, is there any tie-in between this and your uh, venture with Autodesk? Uh, so the building scene scene layer, actually. So when you use the Esri stack to create a building scene layer, Revit, for example, is a, a source uh, file. Now, you know, if you are creating a building scene layer outside of that and you want have, you know, IFC, for example, is another format that can uh, capture this. Uh, there is no sort of uh, you know requirement on that particular format. It's just the current implementation that we have uses Revit uh, from Autodesk, and yeah, we probably have more uh, you know uh, more growth into that area. Directly consuming it back and forth, uh, you know the i3s, the i3s in Autodesk and their content, uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, reality capture in ours. But uh, again, the format is agnostic about the input data source. It does not know about it. Time for a very short question over there. Very sure. Quick so, thanks a lot.
Thank you. And what kind of operation you are trying to optimize with ISV? Is it just a rendering or any kind of a 3D spatial operation like a spatial drawing or something? Okay, good question. So the question is, uh, what is really the goal of I3S? I mean, what are you trying to solve? Is it just rendering or is there also some uh, analytical process, uh, special operation that you're trying to uh, target? I3S originally was de designed to, you know, for visualization purpose. Uh, because again, there aren't that many uh, 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 formats and standards, really. The ones I know is 3D tiles and I3S that could allow you to uh, stream massive amount of mesh data. But then immediately, you know, as soon as that is kind of that, that issue is solved, people really want to do also analysis. Uh, they want to be able to do line of sight, you know, uh, uh, 3D domes and all that, which the format does not preclude, but it does not actively kind of right now does not promote. But I think that's more like an application side. You know, applications can add uh, analytical capabilities. And we have started doing that with desktop application and probably move it to the web uh, solution as well soon. Okay. All right. We We're over time, right? Thank you. <laughs> so thank you, Tamrat, again. Cool. So we will start again at uh, 15 sharp.